Hello! Welcome to Breakfast at Tiffany's. I am your hostess, Tiffany Amazon, and this is another fun-filled, information-packed episode that I am happy to be bringing to you today, and I'm happy that you're here. Thank you for choosing to spend your time with me. Today we have three fun things on the agenda, and <laughs> I'm excited to dive into the very first one, like right here. But today we're going to be talking about a smoothie. I've been promising green smoothie recipes for the summer, right? So we have a twist on the green. Last episode was a twist too. I guess I'm all about twists. So we have an acai smoothie recipe going down today. And I'm also going to be sharing with you an amazing update that is just blown my world. Trying to eat raw healthy foods and preserve the enzymes in foods um, while dehydrating them. You're going to love hearing this if you're at all interested in dehydrating or this is a great reason to start, okay? Third thing is how food has improved my marriage and my relationship with my husband. So there you go. Let's dive in now. Acai smoothie. Shout out to my friend Stephanie who is the CEO, founder, creative genius behind Green Sage. She is an amazing plant-based transition coach, if I'm saying that right, but she helps people bring more plant-based foods into their diet, healthy ones too, so not just saying, hey, you're vegan, but you eat potato chips and french fries. She will help you transition, and I'm, I'm taking her course right now. It's a 30-day gradual transition course, and not that I'm not already eating plant-based, but the content is amazing. I know she's got so much information on nutrition and recipes. You know how fun it is to have someone else meal plan for you? It's amazing. So she has turned me on to acai um, puree. Okay, Trader Joe's has this purple bag of acai packets that are, there's four packets in a package and they are frozen. So you let that thaw a little bit, not too much because it, I mean, for me, if there's a way to make a mess out of something, I'm gonna do it, but if you let it thaw too much, then of course, you know, you get stains all over your fingers um, because when you try and open the package, then it just goes everywhere. Um, but if it's not thawed enough, then you can't really like break it up to put it in your blender. But either way, get some of that. It's really good. So thank you, Stephanie, for that. And she's got an amazing acai smoothie bowl recipe in her course. It's awesome. And this one is just, not just, it's still amazing, but this is my recipe of I was looking what I had around and what I really wanted to taste today, and I've got these acai packets. So this, I haven't even like, been waiting for it to start to even take the first sip. So, oh gosh. Okay, before I can do that, I had to add the topping. Is the cacao nibs. These are one of the number one longevity herbs out there. You can see it a little bit. Oh yeah. Okay, so here's the thing. This one is super simple. So even if you're too busy in the morning, you don't think you have time to be doing anything but running out the door, getting a cup of coffee at work, you can do this one. Frozen packet, you get up, take it out before you jump in the shower, right? It's a can of coconut milk, the whole, um, the full fat version that Trader Joe's has. It's organic coconut milk, only one ingredient. It's amazing. A can of that. Two frozen bananas that don't need to be thawed. You can just take those out right away or you can thaw them when you pull out the assay packets, so that's fine. And then two cups of greens. So that's how I'm, I'm getting in the green smoothie part. I did add two cups approximately of the, you know at Costco they've got that big bag of the power greens. Like who can eat that before it goes bad? Even all the stuff I eat, am I gonna get purple on me? Even all the healthy salads I eat, I have a hard time going through that bag. So, but you buy the bag and then you just freeze it. You can use those gallon freezer bags, just pop it full, just smoosh it down to get the air out, seal it up, put it in the freezer, it's ready to go for you. So then you've got that. I threw in some chia seeds. Those are kind of optional, but they are a great protein source. They are very filling. They expand in your stomach too, so it's gonna keep you feeling full longer. I added a tablespoon of that. And then, of course, the cacao nibs. That, that amazing longevity nutrients that you need. And what else did I put in? Of course, the acai packet and, oh, this is optional. You may not have it, 
probably don't have it, but it is goji berry powder. Goji berry is amazing for you and it works really good. How I got turned on to it is because goji berries are good for you to, to help you heal from radiation exposure when you're flying in an airplane. How else am I gonna fly? But, um, <laughs> and so I, when I discovered I was looking for stuff online and, and Costco has an amazing like low temp dried goji berries. First place, first time I've ever seen them like this. It's amazing the price you can't beat, so get those. But I was looking online um, and I saw these that's powder form and I'm like, how amazing. Now I can add it to my smoothie. So I just did a tablespoon of that. It really gives it a nice kick of flavor. And because I'm not a huge fan of coconut milk, I actually went in and added um, a U-Factor Boost Powder, one of, one of New York's antioxidant boost powders that I'm always talking about that's so amazing. I added one of those in. It's a berry flavored, um, four servings of fruits and vegetables. I'm getting more veggies too. I put that in there as well because the coconut milk taste was still a little bit too strong for me and now it's just like absolutely perfect. So you can kind of adjust, you know, some things to your own taste buds, but this is so good. And purple, mm, sorry, it's a great color for you. Blueberries, oh, did I say blueberries? Oh my gosh, forgot the blueberries. Acai is purple, um, but uh, the blueberries. I had about a cup of frozen blueberries also got thrown in here. So clearly I need to write out the recipe for you guys. <laughs> it's amazing. So there you have it. Side note is flying at night. This is the inspiration for me to take red eyes is Flying at night is the best time of day for you to fly to reduce your radiation exposure because it's from the sun being up so high that you don't have, you know, the filter of those UV rays and the radiation getting to you. Otherwise, red eyes are not fun at all, but, you know, anyway, so goji berries, put some in your bag. So next up, what are we talking about? Oh, dehydrator. Okay, guys. This is huge. This is very huge. Now, I don't know how familiar, depending on my audience, are you that how you mm, how familiar you are with dehydrating foods. Dehydrating, you can make jerkies, you can make fruit roll-ups, you can preserve your fruits and veggies um, for later. You can um, even if you want to like dehydrate things to make your own um, emergency supply food kits, you can dehydrate. The key is to keep everything raw, you don't want food to get technically beyond 118 degrees. That's what we've heard for years about raw food because enzymes start to degrade um, once it's past that. And then what's the point of it's not going to be raw anymore? Sure, it can still be you know healthy for you, but you won't have those enzymes in it that's not alive anymore. Challenge can be it takes a long time to dehydrate. Um, like making making crackers, you know, can take you know 18 hours maybe even 24 depending on the thickness of them. Even here in Las Vegas where it's nice and dry. When I do my almonds and I put seasoning on them with a little bit of oil and some salt and seasonings, that takes three days, okay? Now granted, a lot of things are shorter. Like you can make kale chips in like four or five hours. Um, but what can happen is that depending on what you're making, again, how thick it is, you can get into a bacteria concern, especially if you're in a more humid climate. And it, it just takes so long. And of course then people don't, want to wait that long for their food either the average person I do because it's like so amazing but guess what you can dehydrate your food for the first two hours and again depending on what it is and how thick it is you got a grain of salt with this like you could say between one to three hours three hours probably max for something really juicy or, or thick um, you can dehydrate at 145 degrees. It will cut your drying time in half. Easily cut it in half. It's amazing. Here's the thing. This is, this is like science backed. This is Excalibur Dehydrator has done research, has actually talked to kind of like the founders of the raw food movement and all um, to get this. They've done tests on the food. They've dehydrated seeds, raw seeds, at different temperatures and then attempted to sprout them afterward, after being dehydrated. And the fact that they still sprout is proof that they're still alive and that they, and that they weren't killed in the dehydrator. So it's amazing guys, 
the reason that this works is um, a couple things if I remember to tell it to you right here it's the temperature of the air that's in the dehydrator granted this is the Excalibur dehydrator because of how it's got the 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 vent and the the motor and all on the fan in the back it gets all of the trays individually because it's, it's blowing consistent air across you don't have to like rotate the trays and all like in, or it's not coming from the top or the bottom as some other machines do so I can't speak to how those are gonna work but the Excalibur also does a fluctuating um, temperature uh, so it <laughs> this is amazing let's say it comes out and it's heating things up you know moisture is being evaporated food is starting to warm up but then the temperature drops even though you've set it at say 145 now the temperature is going to drop a little bit it cools off a bit and lets the moisture in the center of your food leave the center and go to the outsides where it's drier and then the motor kicks back up again and now I mean it, for the temperature to fluctuate like that is insanely amazing how genius is that so then you don't get like crunchy stuff on the outside and like you know wet on the inside it evenly dries your things it's amazing right guys isn't this so cool I love it the other thing is is that foods are most sensitive to having their enzymes destroyed when they are wet so if you take let's say a bell pepper super wet and juicy um, and gosh, I didn't even need three hours. I mean, I would probably do that at one hour at 145. Um, but that's when the enzymes are most fragile. Once something has started to be dried and, and then it's fully dehydrated, it's much more um, resistant. The, the enzymes are more stable and it's resistant to being wiped out. The enzymes kind of go dormant. And so the, the enzymes can be reactivated once you put them in water and rehydrate it or you eat it and then your digestive juices hit it. Reactivates those enzymes. It's amazing, right? Can you tell I'm excited about this? It's a huge game changer for how I make things and how you prep and, and to simplify your life and to be able to have access to this yummy variety of foods and crackers and breads and I made some onion bread and you wanna make tortillas, tortillas and you wanna have pizza crusts and, and dehydrate your raw nuts to have that amazing pop and yumminess to them. So many things you can do in a dehydrator. You can saute your veggies. It's pretty cool. So 145 degrees for the first one to three hours of your, depending on what it is that you've put in there and how wet it is and how um, thick and fragile it is too. Uh, and then drop it back down to about 105, 110. And then that's where you're going to leave it for the life of, not the life, but the, the remainder of the dehydrating time until you are done with it, the texture or consistency that you're looking for. Tell me you're not blown away too. If something that takes six hours and that only takes three hours, isn't that amazing? It's totally cool. And I feel like some people are geeky about technology and, um, you know gadgets and all that stuff and how things work I'm really geeky in a way about food like this and learning about well this is technology I guess too but about the science and the research that enables us to do things differently and to learn and to make progress it's it's just phenomenal so there you have it third thing on today's agenda it's also about food. <laughs> I said earlier, can you tell I'm hungry? This is actually the first food I've had today, so pause for one more sip. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, so third thing is about food and how it's changed my relationship, my marriage, right? But first, we have a short intermission. Well, I'm excited to share with you that this episode is sponsored by Neora and I have a message for you. Stay tuned. What do you think? I'm very grateful to New York for sponsoring today's episode and would like to feature this product. Can't read it, it's backwards. The holistic collagen support system that is on special until sellout. This is a limited supply product. It's not in the regular inventory. What this does is, did you know 
collagen is the most abundant protein in your body. It's basically the building blocks for your entire system. It's what keeps everything together. It holds, it's like the glue in your system that, that makes everything work. It's why when you pinch your skin, it goes back. If you didn't have collagen and that creates that elasticity, it wouldn't do that. And that would, that would, <laughs> that would not be pretty. <laughs> you have like stuff sticking out everywhere in your face. It decreases as you age too, your collagen production. Therefore, you start looking older. Your skin isn't as elastic. It starts to hang down, right? So, enter the Holistic Collagen Support System. This product comes with four masks. And I know the lighting is really sad right now. There you go. Four masks that you'll apply to your face. You may have even seen these being applied by yours truly before. Um, they hook around your ears. They, they feel really kind of a little strange as you put them on. <laughs> you look a little strange, but they feel amazing. Your skin, when you take it off, it's like as much as I've been using amazing products for years now, my skin still feels super soft and smooth and so hydrated and plump and just mm, yummy, right? So until they sell out, this box is available for $60. And for existing customers, it includes free shipping. For new customers, you will get free shipping if you add on additional products. So if you, your total is up to $150, you will get free shipping on whatever you purchase. So there you have it. Check it out. If you want some additional information on Neora's Holistic Collagen Support System, hit me up. Okay, I'm back. It's kind of messed up my hair a little bit though. Hmm. Gonna have to figure that out, right? <laughs> so food and my marriage okay so you're busy everybody's working you got a lot of hours um, it, it's all about you know getting convenience making dinner fast you have a lot of processed food you want to be ready-made you don't want to be spending all this time in the kitchen slaving over a hot stove you get a lot of takeout you don't really have time to sit down together or you're eating in front of the TV or you've got leftovers here for this person and you're eating and you're eating separately can you relate to that going on it happens in a lot of households because we're so go, go, go and so busy and and food sometimes just loses priority. We eat because we have to, but sometimes it feels like it gets in the way so we don't spend that time on it, right? I get it. That was me. The caveat. You can't say it's because you don't have a day job that now it's all too easy for you. Mm -mm. Not true. Because this improvement, this change that I'm going to share with you today came about within the last two and a years and a couple months. I have not had my day job for six years and some months. Okay, so it was still about convenience and quick and ready-made and processed and takeout and eating out and eating in front of the TV and eating separately. It was still all about that, okay, except for the last two years and a couple months. What has changed? I'm going to tell you because I know you're curious, right? Food has become a celebration in our household. And food, when you eat healthy food, it not only changes, it not only changes how you feel, it not only changes, um, yeah, it not only changes your, your wellness, right? But it changes how you think. It changes your perspective on life. It changes your priorities. It changes what matters to you. It changes your awareness level. And you may think I'm just like, whatever. Try it. It's true. Okay, ask anybody who has had a transition in their life from eating junk food to making a shift. Um, ask them what the transition has been like for them mentally, spiritually, emotionally with their whole thought process. It, beyond weight loss, beyond you know aches and pains going away, beyond feeling healthier, there's this this whole spiritual side of it, whole mental side of it, di totally different awareness level. And so, what it's done is, I make meals now. I do homemade meals, um, and I enjoy it. I never wanted to be a cook, so I wasn't. I love cooking now. I, it's amazing. It's I love eating local produce. I love getting from farmer's markets. I love growing in my backyard, my own food. Um, it's about the flavors, the, the colors, the look you eat with your eyes first, right? It, it's part of that, that whole experience of having food. It's not just boom, here's a plate in front of you. You had no, no hands in it. 
you don't know who touched it, how long it's been there, how far away it came from, how much money it cost to, or how many calories really were expended in creating this food, what its carbon footprint looks like. You're just like shoveling it in and because you're in the middle of doing something else. You ran through a drive through or something, you know. It happens, it's life, I get it, right? But I've made changes because I'm trying to feel better that triggered thinking differently. So now it's become a thing we do together to a certain extent. Yes, we're not always <laughs> together 100% of the time. You know, I do the majority of, of the cooking, but it's like Kerwin even has his favorite dressing recipe that he makes himself in the Vitamix, knows where the recipe is in the recipe book and makes it. Yesterday he made his own seasoning for the popcorn that he made. Uh, it's a like a raw Parmesan cheese made out of cashews, nutritional yeast, salt, and garlic. He makes that up in our little magic bullet blender. Um, we sit down to dinner, even when he's got to run to work, we still make time. It doesn't have to take forever, but it's it's 20 minutes, it's 15 minutes that, that we sit down. And then, of course, it's good food, and so he claims it for lunch, you know, the next day, or for even for that day. Um, but he packages up his lunch off of the leftovers from our current meal. So it's saving time later with getting, you know, ready for work and, and me having to make something else, you know, homemade, which sometimes um, may not be ready right away. Um, so we've, we've become intentional about it. And we, we don't watch TV when we're eating. Yeah, maybe a bowl of popcorn or some, some yummy ice cream. But we sit down at the table. We have a glass of wine, even in the middle of the day. It doesn't matter that it's not at dinner time. You can customize this for your family, for your household. If he's working an afternoon shift, um, we're gonna have our meal when, before, when he's here, <laughs> before he goes to work. Or we're gonna have food when he comes home. It's like, so we're gonna eat dinner really early, you know, um, right now when he's on a day shift and he gets home in the middle of the afternoon. We're gonna have dinner probably around three or four because he's hungry coming home from work had lunch a long time ago, and then we're done eating much sooner in the evening, which is great, you know, for some intermittent fasting too. So you adjust, but it's, it's made, having food as a celebration has just made things so different for us. You know, it's like we have a closer relationship. It's fun that we do together in the, in the kitchen. You know, last night I, I drug him out to the garden and I was like, there's an eggplant out there. Are you ready to saute something? Do you? He's like, well, it's kind of late. I'm like, yeah, but you know, we could make a really cool dish. It's like, well, what do you want to make? So then it's the conversation of, you know, you start thinking about it. What could you put with it? We've got another, you know, we've got some red bell peppers that just got harvested from the garden too. We've got some kale out there. It's like, oh my gosh, that would be like really yummy. And you just start, you start to think, and you get, <laughs> you get the juices in your mouth that really start to come. Thinking about food, yeah, you get the digestive enzymes already going in your own body, much less uh, what you're going to bring in in the food as well. So you get yourself prepared to eat, but you have fun together. You have a relationship. We don't, I guess I take pictures of my food, but I don't post them. You know, so I have my phone out, but I don't post on social media when we're together. Um, we're sitting there enjoying our food. We may talk about what we could do to improve it, you know, make, make it next time differently, or is this a good one or not, you know, but it's created that partnership, that conversation, that fun we have together in the kitchen, and it's really brought us a lot closer together, is my whole point, and yeah, I think that's really pretty amazing, so I would, I would recommend for all of you who, to try it out, regardless of what you're eating, you don't have to eat like I do, eat what works for you, but just spend some time to make it a little intentional, to to pour, you know, a glass of wine, even if it's three o'clock in the afternoon, to have a placemat, you know, to make something look a little pretty, um, to put color in your food, to, you know, they say to eat the rainbow, but yeah, you know why that, that is that way? Because the colors have different nutrients in them and it's all captured sunlight. It's all energy and different vibes of energy. I mean, we're all energetic beings, right? Vibrating at different levels and on. So when you're attracted, when your body starts to communicate with you and you start to be able to hear, your body's attracted to certain colors because of what it needs at the time. So listen, if you're like craving something odd and you're like, what? Maybe it's what your body is telling you something. So listen. Um, but if you generally eat the rainbow, you're going to get a good variety of everything and, and tend to stay in better balance. But you're still going to have those moments when you're like, body's like, mm, something orange sounds really good right now.
Why is that? Who knows what's in that orange that you want, but it's okay. Go and eat it. So there you have it, guys. That's my thought for you today on um, this episode of Breakfast at Tiffany's. Got your essay smoothie going. You've, you've now know how to shorten the dehydrator time and how amazing raw foods are and the things that, that science learns and, and how we grow and, and life gets easier the more, the more we know and make progress, right? And then lastly, what I just shared with you about how to strengthen the relationship um, in your marriage or in your relationship, centering it around food and really being intentional about the whole foods that you eat to give your body those nutrients so that you feel better so that you can think differently and your priorities change and you can make it work in whatever your busy lifestyle is, but by creating that, that time together, it just builds a stronger bond between you and the other parties in this relationship that you're gonna build. It could be like an entire family. It's like for, for me and Kerwin, it's the two of us and our dogs. But they're not eating the food that we're eating, but they definitely get their samples of it and it's such a joy for us to be able to feed them in a way that honors them. And they do get all the scraps Side note, they do get all the scraps from the, the veggies that we're cutting up. So I've got my compost pile, my dog pile, and then, you know, of course, our pile. So um, it's kind of fun. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Breakfast at Tiffany's. I am certainly happy to bring it to you. Next week, I'll be back. I think that's all she wrote. If there are any topics that you would like me to talk about, any discussions you want to have, any recipes you want to, or any foods you want to know how to make a recipe for in a healthy way or something to substitute and all, just, just give me a shout out. I'd be happy to um, address that or answer any questions that you may have in another episode. So have a wonderful Sunday and bye for now, you guys. Thanks for watching.